Right, hello everyone. We've got a little tutorial here on how to use the Twitch VOD track in OBS on Linux. So this is related to people getting DMCA'd. There's a big DMCA scare back in November of last year. What this will let you do with the Twitch VOD track is you can have music playing in your live stream. And then when you look in the VOD and listen to it, the music is not there. Now, this isn't a true protection against getting DMCA'd. The technology for live DMCA's already existed even before the November scare, but this is still a good step to take until the record labels get hungry for money again. And the prerequisites needed for my method are not very large. This method uses Pulse Audio. If you don't know if you have Pulse Audio, you probably do. It's like the default for 90% of Linux distros. You'll obviously need OBS and you'll need to use some terminal-based apps and be okay with that. So before I show how to do it, I want to sort of show visually what is going on. Just to make things a little clearer, this took me a little bit to wrap my head around. So normally when you're recording audio with OBS Studio, sort of what is happening, this is sort of a simplified picture. You're having your apps, your sources, is what they're called in Pulse Audio, playing sound. These go into the sync, which is your speakers or your headphones. And then OBS is able to record what is going into those speakers or headphones. However, this means that the bad audio here, the red line, which is your music, cannot be separated from your other good sources that you want playing in your VOD versus the music which you only want live. So what we're going to do instead is make two virtual devices and our music will be routed into one virtual device, all other applications will be routed into another virtual device, and this gives two separate devices for OBS to pull audio from, and that gives us a way to control what where each device goes. Then we'll also have the music going to your speakers from these virtual devices using Pulse Audio Loopback. So let's get into the steps needed to implement the Twitch VOD track. First, you're going to want to copy step one out of the description, which is this command. PACTL load module, module null sync, so this is like a virtual speaker to put sound into. And then in the description it has your name here. You can make the name main virtual sync if you want. You can make it whatever name you want. Same with the description. You'll just hit enter. If it runs successfully, you'll just get a number. And now we have a virtual sync set up. So if I go into pulse audio volume control, which I already have open here. You can see I have Firefox open right now. It's playing on my headphones. And we can change it to play out of this virtual sync instead. But now if I take the browser here and try and play any audio, the music is playing. It is going into this virtual sync. So we can see by the bar moving, but we can't hear it. So how do we fix this? So that's where step two in the description comes in. So now I'm going to paste that one in. It might automatically run. All right. So this one will instead load the module module loopback. So this allows sound from one sync to play in another. We're going to want to have this important option set latency milliseconds equals one. We're gaming. So we don't want a bunch of extra added lag. Next for the source, you'll want to specify the name of the virtual sync you put above. If the name doesn't match, then this won't work. Then for the output here, I have this already filled in with the name of my headphones. So this will just go ahead and work. If I hit enter, it will give me a number. And if I play the sound here, this will actually work. Now, in order to get the name of your audio device, if you don't already know it, We'll need to use this command, PACTL list short thinks. So the short part just means it'll give us just the names. So we aren't given a bunch of extra info we don't need. This is, command is also in the description. So here we can see this part here is the name of all the different audio devices on my computer. You want to find the one that matches what you want to use. It also shows the virtual sync and its name. So in my case, if I wanted to use the headphones, which is my full of sheet DAC, I can copy this line. If I wanted to use the built-in audio, it would be this one. I need to maybe play around with this to figure out which audio device goes with which name. But then you just replace the 
sync here in the loopback command, and we'll get loopback working. The next step we'll need to do is basically repeat the two steps we just did before, but we'll want to change the sync name to something else. So in my case, I use music virtual sync. And we'll change the description here to be music virtual sync. And then we'll get loopback set up on this music virtual sync as well. So make sure the source here for the loopback is set to music virtual sync. We'll still go out to my headphones. We'll see it's working as well. And then if I go into Pulse Audio Volume Control, we can see there's loopback here as playback. So we can change the volume, control the volume of this loopback separately. If we go to Firefox, we can set it to play out this main virtual sync, or we can set it to play out this music virtual sync if we want. We can test that audio comes out here as well. So I've walked through all the steps you need to do outside of OBS. Now I've opened up OBS and we can do some of the OBS specific setup. So first thing we're going to want to do is add both of our audio sources. So I'm going to add audio output capture, pulse audio. I'll just name this one main as well so we can keep track of them. The device we want to capture is the main virtual sync. I'm going to do the same thing here add audio output capture, name this one music. And we're going to capture the music virtual sync. So that was simple enough. So now this will capture, we play back this YouTube video again. Look at OBS, you can see the audio bar is going up. This is the music virtual sync. Because in pulse audio volume control here, got the music still Music sync still selected. If we change it to main, you can still hear the audio, but it's being captured now in this main sync. Now, this is probably the big main step. So I'm going to maximize this here. So what we're going to do is go over here to the gear here. Oops. Okay. Oh, go over here to this gear. There's multiple gears. Go to this gear here, go to advanced audio properties for both of these. And this is the main part. I'm going to go over here to tracks. We're going to find our music sync. So this is the one we don't want to play in the VOD or in clips. We're just going to deselect track two so it doesn't play in track two. So track one is the audio that goes to the live stream. And then track two is the audio that goes into the VODs and the clips. So if you wanted to make audio that only plays in the VODs, you could obviously like reverse this if you wanted. But we want to make sure track 2 is deselected for music. And then we also want to make sure we go into settings here. Under output, make sure you have Twitch VOD track selected. So that way OBS actually knows to do this. This is under the simple output mode. And that's basically all you need to do. You can verify this. Making a, maybe making a second account, just do a quick little test stream, make sure you have this working, and that should be good to go. And just to make things a little more clear, I have a plain sound going in VLC here. So we're going to assume this is our music. This is how you'd set things up in Pulse Audio Volume Control. So our music, quote unquote, we'd make sure it goes into the music virtual sync. Anything else we want, so in this case Firefox, because we're just streaming a web browser, that's peak content. Goes into our main virtual sync, and then basically anything else. So if we were playing a game, we'd make sure this is set to the main virtual sync, so on and so forth. So now let's say you're done with your live stream, and you want to undo what we've just done in the terminal to set up our virtual syncs. This can also be done pretty simply. I'm going to use another Pulse Audio command PACMD unload module and then you will use the module numbers that each of these steps output that's what these numbers were so we have 28 29 30 and 31 in this case there we go so now our virtual syncs are unloaded all the loopback is unloaded it doesn't show under playback we've undid what we just did so finally the last step you might want to take is Find a way to sort of automate as much of this as possible. Now, 
I haven't figured out the best way to automate all of this, but the main step of just creating the virtual sinks, I have down pretty good. So personally, I just use a bash alias. You can search around and figure out how to make a bash alias. I have it called null loopback streaming dual track, so I have a capital N, so I can basically just type capital N and then press tab, it auto-completes. It creates all these sinks. Then the only issue I have here is once you open up Pulse Audio Volume Control, there's not really a good way to set these virtual syncs as the default audio device. Um, if you're using a desktop environment like Cinnamon or maybe Gnome or KDE, I think the audio switcher applet will let you set these virtual syncs as the default audio device. However, I like to use LXQT for game streaming. But yeah, I have to manually set the virtual syncs here in Pulse Audio Volume Control. There might be a better way to manage this part. That way maybe the main is the default audio app, and then you can just manually set the music app. An alternate method you could take, if perhaps you're like me and you have a separate desktop environment session that you log in specifically for streaming, is you could turn these commands into a shell script, save that somewhere, and then you could have this shell script auto start. So here I could specify this shell script if I had it saved somewhere and it would run on startup. I think most desktop environments have some sort of auto start GUI here. So that wraps up my little tutorial on how to use the Twitch VOD track in OBS for Linux. And I didn't really see anything else online when I tried to look this up, so I had to figure it out myself. If there's any improvements you can think of adding, sure, be sure to let me know in the comments. I'm sure there's a lot of things that could be done better, hopefully. If you want to help the visibility of this video, make sure other people know how to do this, you can hit the like button. Otherwise, I just hope this video helped. Thanks for watching, and bye.